everyone, and welcome back to For the Minions, the weekly podcast, vodcast, whatever you want to call it, where we talk about the various third-person MOBAs out there. Um, what we're going to be talk, what we're going to do is we're going to go through, talk about the updates for each one. I'll have those timestamped in a pinned comment in the description below. Then we're going to talk about the poll results for the most popular game out there right now. And then uh, we're going to move on to our topic of discussion, which is the pros and cons of being first. Uh, I'm your host, the Mangoose. Joining me, as always, is my friend and co-host, Jelly Knees. Jelly, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Mangoose. Happy to be here for another For the Minions. And with us, we've got the Bearded Wolverine. Welcome, Bearded. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank you. I am I love the fact that I'm here. So, <laughs> And we I'm love the fact that you're here, too. Minions. Explain to us like where you're coming from in terms of like the Paragon, how you started playing Paragon, what your character was, Lane, all that good stuff. All right. Uh, so... I ended up getting a PlayStation 4 uh, when I was in the Navy, and when I got it, it came with Uncharted 4, but I never played Uncharted 3. So I'm the guy that I have to do things in order. I played Uncharted 1 and 2, and I didn't have the money to get Uncharted 3 yet, so I needed a game. So I was like, well, I'll get on the PlayStation 4. I'll get a, a demo that I can just mess with here and there because it's the PlayStation 4. It's, you know, I want to see this cool graphics, you know? So I was going through, and I saw a full game. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I clicked on it, and then you got to watch this preview. I'm like looking, and I saw this big orange guy jump in the air. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I'm like, what is this? I'm like, this looks pretty fucking badass. And it was a Kool-Aid like, well, commercial. It's for- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is with you and Kool-Aid references? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> big orange guy leaping so- through the air. <laughs> Go ahead, Bearded. Sorry. Sorry for interrupting. See, you're good. You're good. No. So I downloaded it, and then I started playing, and uh, saw this badass Murdoch-looking guy. I'm like, all right, let's jump on him and uh i realized that towers hurt so you know I, it took me a long time to realize that i never put a ward down i don't know i i think i, I should go look at fault math all much uh um paragon what was it agora.gg Agora.gg, and, yeah. yeah and see if i can find uh a stat and see how many wards i actually place because i probably I, I could probably count on my one hand maybe <laughs> maybe two how many wards i placed because i didn't know what a mobile was i literally had no clue that I was playing, what, what I was playing. So I'm one of the very few that actually preferred version 42 because of the card system, made it easier for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. They can just focus on the actual game and trying to help the team with the objectives. They're not worried about going to the item shop, like, okay, what do I build here? You know? <laughs> so I enjoyed it, but um, it, it gave me the ability to see the game and understand the game and realize what I do enjoy as a MOBA. But that's where it all started. I think that story matches quite a few people. Like, if it's a free game and it looked gorgeous and it's like, well, I'm going to play this even though I've never played a MOBA before. And then this is how yep. people got hooked on MOBAs. So Definitely. Let's uh, move on here down to the news and updates. Uh, for Predecessor, sorry, but we got nothing this week. There was nothing at all coming out of Predecessor. So hopefully uh, hopefully they got their heads down working on something or other. Um, Wolverine, you're the guest. What do, what do you think of Predecessor? Uh, I like Predecessor. They 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 got a really smooth game. Uh, it feels great, you know. When you when you jo- join the game, you're running around playing everything. Uh, motion, uh, the anim- ability, sorry, uh, motion, everything feels great. Um, they're when they first uh, I first played it, their time to kill was way too fast. Like it literally was just death ball. Like there, it wasn't even a moba. It literally was just hey, everybody just go, f- and then we're just gonna shove lanes. And like you, there's no laning phase at all. Um, this last uh, stress test, I got to play a couple of them. I was uh, thankfully they uh, brought me in for the uh, little creator, you know, content they did, so I could do some recordings and put some content out for them that way. Um, I had played some games there. It, it's definitely feeling better. There's definitely a more of a landing phase. It's getting there, so I think that's more balancing needs to be done. But um, I think they definitely got a game there for sure to to come out once they finally get ready and figure out their server issues because that stress test was pretty bad. Jelly. Any, any thoughts uh, on predecessor this week? I mean, if Ometa wants to reach out to us and give us something to talk about, I think we'd be open to that. <laughs> yes. Let's I'm sorry, go. not Ometa. O-M-E-D-A. O-M-E-D-A, O-M-E-D-A Studios. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I miss the days, the early FTM days, where my process was to just contact Smokey. Like, I would just... <laughs> Contact Smokey personally, have right. a chat with him. Maybe we play some Hearthstone or something, bullshit around a bit, and I'll be like, hey, man, you got any, you got any updates for yeah. this week? Can't do that Come anymore. On, there. You got to grease some palms there. You got to get they're, some They're a serious right. business yeah. now. They're a serious business. <laughs> I can't <laughs> contact the creator directly anymore. <laughs> I got to go through marketing. Well, 
I mean, you know, don't start at Steve. You know, start at Smokey. Go to Steve Superfan. He's lower. He's <laughs> oh, lower you know, than. Yeah, yeah. He's lower than Sergeant Smokey. You got to work your way up the ladder now. <laughs> All right. I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> Speaking of famous predecessor people, I I firmly b- blame that that fast TTK, especially with um, ADCs. I blame that on RGSAs. I think because yeah, he, Ace was an ADC 100%. main. He was like, was he an ADC main? Yeah, he's like ADC's oh, okay. got a got a hit hard as fuck early game. I think I blame that I shit thought, on him. I thought I saw something about him being a Sevrock guy or whatever, but, but no, I, I played a lot of ADC. Follow... He played a lot of Wraith ADC too. Okay, mm-hmm. I didn't follow a lot of the uh, content creators. It, it, I started, you know, with uh, some of the smaller ones, just trying to find builds and not even know. Because when I watched YouTube, you know, at a younger me age, Paragon at me age. Uh, I was just trying to find builds. I wasn't doing the whole subscribing. I wasn't doing the liking. I wasn't doing the commenting. I, knew, I didn't understand the algorithm. I didn't. I, to me, they're, that's just somebody giving me content. Thank you. You know, but I was, you know, just taking it for free. You know, like wasn't giving any of the, the support to it um, besides the view. So I, I know I've seen some of those, you know, people do that, but I wasn't paying attention to who it was. So maybe I did watch, you know, an ace video, but I didn't know if it who it was. I was watching then. <laughs> So I had no clue who was the big guys or the these content creators until after Paragon fell and I started following people like Mangoose and Britic and you know uh, the other ones just kind of like hey here's the updates you know the for the minions was was huge cuz you know Phoenix Rising you know like was huge you know coming out and sad RIP um <laughs> but <laughs> yeah well the views are yeah. good enough but for you guys watching out there if you want to hit that like button subscribe <laughs> and leave a comment <laughs> You're most certainly welcome to do so. <laughs> Let's move on now on to uh, to Ethereal Jelly. You sandbagged on us. You knew this was coming. I mean, I got to do something. I know, right? you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I told people to go watch the community corner. I knew stuff was coming. Um, but yeah, so we they had their community corner last week. Skifter and I were both the hosts of that. Went through a bunch of changes, a new myth and also announced the stress test that's happening on November 20th, which is a Saturday. So all people have to do is just sign up for their newsletter on the website. If you click register on the top right of the website, it takes you to where you need to be to sign up for a stress test, which is super exciting. And then on Saturday, we've got the two of you and a bunch of other creators all doing the extra life stream for charity, which will be great too. Mangus, that, uh, that newsletter, you're signed up for it. How, how is that? You've read a few of them, right? I've read zero of them. I watched the last end of the ether. I remember you bringing it up. Because I don't ever, I don't ever check my emails. <laughs> You're like, does it even have a newsletter? Like, <laughs> I've signed up for it, but I don't, I don't check my emails. That's why Mangus and I are such a good team. I send the emails. He doesn't read them. It's fine. I'm su- yeah. I, I support their Patreon, but Jelly has to like hit me up and be like, hey, did you see this on Patreon this week? I'm like, no, I haven't checked it yet. <laughs> Like, I'm paying for this, but I'm just going to ignore it. I got to make sure someone reads my post, okay? <laughs> There's plenty of people who read so, them, just not me. Yeah. Yeah, Shad's definitely one of them. I can guarantee it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Love Shad you, Shad. reads them like four times. He's got a bunch of different accounts that he reads them on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that I mean, that's huge, huge news. Oh, it's definitely huge. Finally yes. getting the stress test. For Ethereal, I don't know how many people are going to be able to play. Like you said, you guys are just going to go until the game breaks. And so we don't have any idea how many people are going to be able to get in. But that is really good to see because people have doubted Ethereal for a very long time yeah. now. And for good reason. They've missed so many alpha dates, but we're finally getting something. And this is coming from Jelly, so I trust it. Yeah. Right. No. Trust it. <laughs> and if I suddenly of... disappear, you know that something's gone wrong. <laughs> Well, I mean, it says a lot, too, that they must have a lot of confidence in their game, you know, because they're allowing, you know, me, Mangoose, and a few others, you know, to come in here and actually stream this game, you know, and actually put out put it out there. Like, it's like anything could go wrong, but they're confident enough in their game that they're allowing us to do that. So that says a lot. It says that they were already prepared for it, and they didn't announce it until they were prepared, which is something we've talked about <laughs> a million times. I wonder where that right, came about from. each and every one of these companies. <laughs> yep. No, definitely. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, yeah, because I'm excited for it. Like, it like comes from the extensive be testing, right? We've been testing for five, six months at this point already. So we've gone through and and removed a lot, of, almost all of the game breaking stuff, the crashing, all of that kind of stuff. 
So now it's ready, kind of ready for that next step of getting people like content creators, getting people to do stress tests, like really push the game to its limits. Okay. And try out new off beta stuff because uh, Jelly seems to think that Talos is not a support, and I think that he hey, is. What? When did I ever say this? You made fun of me when I said I was going to go Talos support. I make uh, fun you of you said, every day. Okay, that's true. You, you both have very <laughs> credible comments there, but I was there. He said Talos, and you're like, what? Seriously? And like, then he, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give him a confirmation on this. <laughs> I'm glad we brought Bearded on. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> to settle our marital disputes. He's like the poor friend in the corner. <laughs> well, Jelly and Mangoose bicker. <laughs> We're used to okay. This point. So yeah, register for the Ethereal Stress Test. Finally get that on, on Saturday, which is the next day after this post. I'm posting these on Fridays. Watch everybody playing because it's going to be a blast. You get a, a little taste, another taste for how ethereal is, and you get some other. Because we're obviously Jelly and I are both ethereal fanboys, and I think, I think Bearded is turning into one oh, as, as, as we go. He's but joining the train for sure. You're, you're going to yep. see different creators and get their take on it. They may have a, uh, they may be a little more um, critical of it. I know I'm certainly critical in my own right, but. Um, you know, the more the merrier, the more opinions you can get, the better. And yeah. since the last gameplay that's been shown, there have been dozens of changes of things that people are going to see yep. and realize that it's it's progressed in a, in a long way since that last gameplay came out as well. Right. right. And if you if you do watch any of the streamers that are doing it, you know, uh, put put some feedback on it, what you think as a viewer of what it looks like, because that's just going to help. You know, Undying Games, you know, improve the game even more. So just commenting on that streamer, hey, this is what I think. So that streamer can then go back and report, you know, uh, to the Undying Games, you know, team. And, and let's say this is why I got a bunch of people in my in my chat saying this, you know. And I'm sure that a bunch of you will probably be hanging out in some of those chats and, you know, with the viewers as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Should be so, should be a good time. We're excited. I'm I'll have fun no matter what. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna have Talos as my support, so I'm good. As long as you have me on the line on your team, you'll have a great time, I'm sure. Yeah, yes, yes, because I was on the thing. other end of that. And I don't want to be into that. I don't want to. You've got Jelly again. playing Malayo on your team. You're good. <laughs> Otherwise, you're screwed. <laughs> it's like super Kalari Countess boy over there. Yeah. Um. So let's move on from Ethereal. Let's talk about Fault. Here's the thing with Fault. I I would not have known there were any updates whatsoever if it wasn't for Bearded. True. So, like, if I was <laughs> doing true. this on my own, I wouldn't have found any updates at all. Did you Did you see the update today? No, no, no. no. There's no update. They just announced oh, the winner. Okay. Of, they, they announced <laughs> the winner of the, you can see it on my screen, the uh, Gideon skin. They announced when did the that happen? It, it, I don't know, four or three o'clock? I don't know. Oh, okay. It, it was on their, their Twitter post. If you got to follow Man, that's video, a little crunch in yep. the nuts. If, especially right. if you won that uh, skin and then you can't even use it. It was posted in their Discord from their Twitter bot or whatever it is, Twitter feed bot at 4.26 p.m. So a guy named Thomas Hardy. Well, congratulations, Thomas Hardy, for getting a skin wasn't, that you can't use. Wasn't that one of the Hardy boys? Like if you read, the I think books, it was. was it? I think. Was it? Is he? Is that actually one of the... He is the Hardy Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why aren't they using him to endorse the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah shit. They're, that's their marketing scheme. We just figured it out. There we go. That's marketing. Once 14 finally happens, we got it, guys. <laughs> um, so, But that's not the only thing they... Uh, they didn't announce it. They literally made a... A developer came in and made a pinned message in, in Gen Chat. And the message read... Uh, the um, mastery system is not going to be based off of how many games you played, but the experience system that is affected by match time and how you play, uh, how you played. Thirty matches is probably the average it'll take for a mastery as long as you are playing average or above average in most games. So okay. that's going to be how you it's you like know accumulate your mastery skins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, Mangus. Talk about your age that you're gonna finally be at when you get these masters. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, I'll be I'll be sixty before I get. <laughs> unless unless you're playing Decker Mangoose, in which case you're gonna do it in like ten games because you're always stealing the carries kills. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, yeah. I do. I don't know anybody who knows that. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't know any carries that I might <laughs> often support and steal their kills a lot. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll, again. I'll drink some more. No, no version 14. <laughs> uh, it's cool that they confirmed the mastery system and that it's only going to be around 30 games if, if you play play about average. So, I mean, yeah. I, I guess that would be like 15 wins, 15 losses sort of thing. But you know how else they could have confirmed that? <laughs> post. Putting out patch notes for patch 14. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that yeah. too. Could have. That they too. Could have. There was one other thing that was, again, confirmed only by a gen chat pin. And that was a uh, one of the founders came in and says that they are. Yeah, we have one hero coming out with uh, with the patch. So when patch drops, that's the way I'm reading this one hero coming out with the patch. So when patch drops, we're getting a hero who that may be. We don't know. Going by the teasers we've had before, we're let's most likely be phase. Right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he said, then he said, we start planning on co- continuing to uh, add heroes, heroes. Oh, my gosh. More often like we did at the start, and that was in parentheses. So I don't think it's going to be every other month like they were doing it, but, you know, we'll see. So I kind of feel... Two every other month? That's what I take from that post, at least. Yeah. It, th- I kind of feel about this this kind of stuff, and about it kind of really any update that comes out of them right now, it's like when, when Overprime makes updates, people are like, yeah, but when Steam? Or like if mm-hmm. you put out updates for any of these games... Right. Yeah, but when's when's it on PlayStation? Like nobody nobody cares. Like right now, right. I don't care about any huh. of that. I just want patch fourteen. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. That's a, that's the thing is like nobody would be asking about patch fourteen if they didn't talk about patch fourteen. Mm-hmm. Nobody would ask an overprime about Steam if they didn't talk about. Well, I guess no, that people would be asking about Steam because <laughs> you need a good client to yeah. actually put the game on, you know. But I mean, but nobody it wouldn't be asked at the astronomical amount that it is if they didn't bring it up and say, hey, this is what we're doing, and then just nothing you know and it feels weird that they're doing it via pinned messages in a gen chat instead of making an out making yeah turn them into announcements if you're going to say right. something say something right do right don't do this weird half we do something else on twitter and then pin comments in gen chat that's just kind of weird right make these announcements global make it that everybody knows right so at least if i'm looking for an update today i can feel partially satisfied and that i heard something Right, and even if even if UK, so let's say I because I was in Gen Chat when these happened, um, so I was there and I, I was able to read it. Like, okay, sweet, got it. But you could easily just take that now pinned message and put it out there to the people through everything mm-hmm. other social media. Like, here you go. This was what was talked about today in Discord Gen Chat. If you want yeah. more information like this faster than what you got it now, come hang out on our Discord. You know, and then it's like there you go. But. Yeah, nothing was done. It's just a pin message. I'm so, again truly know. hoping I, that we're going to look like idiots and that it's going to release between now and Friday. But I don't think that's going <laughs> to happen. Last week. But I hope so. My favorite saying that I don't know if it's ever been said before is uh, don't get your hopes up, but never give up hope. Mm-hmm. How is that your favorite saying if you've never said it before? I don't know if anybody else has said it before. <laughs> okay. I've said it before. <laughs> It's like my my favorite mantra? saying that I just Motto? made up. <laughs> no, I've said catchphrase. I like that though. I like that. Yeah, well, that's good for sure. Uh, all right, so let's move on from fault to overprime. Overprime continues to just blast out update after update after update. Still, we still don't know when they're going to come onto Steam. Uh, we don't mm-hmm. know. We know that they are working on PS5. We don't know when. We don't know anything about PS4. We just know some about PS5. But man, yeah, again, uh, they they did a tech art demo. It was just kind of another video on their part. Uh, did you guys did you guys see that? Yeah, I did not actually. I, well, I know Jelly saw it because he broke it down and like discovered <laughs> different. You know, like, he, he broke it down. Jelly style. for a moment. <laughs> yeah. And like looked at their screens in the corner to like see what other heroes are being added and stuff. Leave it to me, man. That's what I do. <laughs> I look for the little details. What you're wanting me to look at, I'm going to look away over there. <laughs> yeah. Let's figure out what's over there first. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so on the side screen, you could see the Unreal Engine uh, the Unreal Engine open mm-hmm. and saw what characters and what abilities they were working on in the little viewport that they had open. And from that, you can see Aurora, Boris, Countess, Chimera, Serith, Shinbi, Steel, and Greystone all on that one screen. Um, 
which according to their website, none of those are in the game yet. Some of those we've seen before that they've removed, but according to their website, none of those characters are confirmed on their site yet. Right. Okay. Hmm. I think the biggest one for me to see on there is Boris because the others we have, we assume that they're going to keep the kits relatively the same. Right. Right. That they're, or they're going to have their identity at the very minimum. Yeah. Boris didn't have that when Paragon closed. He had abilities made to be sure, but he wasn't released. And so it's, they could go completely a different route than what we've seen with Fault right. and create a completely different identity to the character than what we know. His kit when he was in Overprime was very similar to Fault's kit because was it? I think they, the animations are there for his different abilities. So it, it's kind of some of that stuff is kind of obvious. I think his Q was a charge, though, where he would charge at somebody. And then if he hit them, it would stun both him and the person and deal a bunch of damage to them. Hmm. It was right. like a really long, fast charge. And then um, his his ultimate in Overprime, I knew I didn't like because it was just Steel's ultimate. Yeah. And then Steel, I... Steel remember, he had instead of the... Um, Instead of the bonk, he had like a kick. He would kick people in the chest and slow them down. So they okay. they do have some different abilities for him from what I've seen already. I don't know how that's going to change upon final release. Yeah. Mm. And theoretically, their character is going to come out alongside in somewhere in the mix of these other characters, too. Which we know nothing at all about. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, she's got a shield and a chain sword. She's and Terra and Yin. Mixed together. There we go. <laughs> Guess what we needed. <laughs> and they're going to call her Nancy. No, I forget, <laughs> no, I forget what her name was. They, that kind of moves us on, though. Nancy. They did have their hero name polls. My God. Overprime has been oppressing the shit out of me. Like, their tech demo, <clears throat> like, the before and after of Gideon's Ultimate. Like, Gideon's Ultimate, after they did the, the new particle effects, it looks like a real event horizon. Well, I've never seen a real event horizon, but you know what I mean? Like you, I've seen computer models of an event horizon and that's exactly what Gideon's ultimate looks like. It looks really good. Like everything they did in that tech demo looks really good. However, they, they did this poll to rename the heroes because people don't like the names for their heroes, but the names, the choices they gave for some of these heroes were like, what are you guys thinking? Like for Gideon, they... like your choices were like Daryl, Cosmos or Travis. And it's like... <laughs> It's almost like, like they're trying to point you, hey, pick Cosmos, please. Yeah, like, right. Like, 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 we're just going to give you these two off-the-wall ones that just don't make any sense. Please pick uh, off the Cosmos. But we all know that, uh, you know, uh, Walking Dead people are going to pick Daryl. Like, they just want to have Daryl live again. And they're hoping <laughs> that he's going to get a crossbow that he can shoot with his, you know. His, <laughs> like, come on. If his name is going to be Travis, though, we need, like, a Trailer Park Travis skin. <laughs> that we can have him use, like, yes. random stuff. It's oh, it needs to happen. I was looking through the names for a lot of these the heroes like Bellica, like Ellen, or like whatever, and it's like it's just people I went to high school with. Like <laughs> that's what these names seem like. Some of them were good, like Revenant, who they're calling Von Rover right now. Um, one of his options was Shade, which I kind of like for Revenant. I think that's okay. Interesting. But for Kalari, it was good. like. Kakia, yeah, Kayla, Night Slasher, or like. <laughs> there it is. Oh, there we go. Your camera was out of focus that whole time. Oh, That's was it yeah. really? Good. Yeah. I wanted it to be. I, I, <laughs> yeah. That's the weird thing, Mangoose, that you bring up is Killer Slash as a name alongside someone named Ellen. Yes. Or like, like, who's on your team? Right? I've got Ellen and Killer Slash. Yeah. What? No, that just. Scud, <laughs> Night Slasher, Daryl. Yes. I just I, the Scud name as a Murdoch like main like I cannot stand <laughs> it. Please change it. I did I get rid of Scud. I want something else. I'd rather I, I have Daryl. Please give me Daryl. At least Daryl seems more like a cop. Yeah, I don't know Maybe what's going on with my camera. Just be quiet. <laughs> Maybe it'll <laughs> put your there hand you in go. front of there it. Pull it up. There you go. I just <laughs> had to smile. Maybe it's focusing in on my teeth. There it is. <laughs> All right. And it, so if you want to vote on those hero names, go to Overprime's Discord. It'll be, it'll be linked in the description below, and then you can throw in your own did, two cents. They haven't they haven't done all of them yet. I'm sure they'll do all of them eventually. Did they at least give you an option tab where you could write in your own names? No, 
Unfortunately, they should not. have done that at least because I'm pretty sure that people would get a little bit better option than Cosmos, Daryl, and Travis. <laughs> like, come what is on, the name now. of the Raptor in fault, isn't it Reggie? Reginald, well, yeah, that was fun. yeah, that was pretty yeah. stupid too. That, that I mean, yeah. it's among the same lines. Like, of we've got like Bone Slasher and Reggie. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh god. Um, other other stuff coming up from them. They updated their work in progress. They got like a steampunk skin for Narbash. And it looks like mm -hmm. they're working on steampunk skins for a lot of the heroes. Because if you look up, there's like a steampunk skin for Howitzer as well. And they're, they're calling Narbash Drum, by the way. Just just Drum. Perfect. But I, it's a pretty cool looking skin all. for Drum. Yeah, <laughs> dude. A, a lot of the skins that we've seen them working on look incredible. Like yeah. just the concept arts that they've shown are amazing. I would buy those skins 100%. Yeah. It's not just yeah, concept one, art. It's one, like uh, actual 3D modeled skins for a lot of these. Yeah. The uh, Howitzer skin. That one was, I don't, was that a Lego? I don't know. It had like a Legos on it or whatever. Like I had like the, at least the. The little dots that Legos have for it was a pretty badass looking skin, like orange and the co bright colors, everything. I, I I liked it. Yeah, they got some cool shit going on. And uh, just today, they were talking about they're going to start marketing via YouTube Shorts and like TikTok and stuff, which I think is a good move on their part. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, they're definitely at the point in their development where that they can get short clips like that and put them out everywhere and make it really easy to blow up. All right. Anybody? Do you guys have anything else to say about Overprime before we move on to the popularity poll? No. Steam. Steam when? <laughs> steam when? We got steampunk. Now we just need steam. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or maybe we got punked with the whole steam. Oh, yeah, maybe. What if that, wait, wait. What if the <laughs> used tinfoil hat idea right here? Uh oh. What if their steampunk skins are going to release with their steam client? Oh, that would be amazing. That, that would be a brilliant tie-in. I'm just saying. <laughs> That would be great. I would love that. All right, Overprime devs, I need you to reach out. We're taking our ten percent with that idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are we starting this again? Right on. We get to do this with all the games now. Uh, exactly, dude. Perfect. We're gonna be I, was, I was on this episode, so I get like five percent of that, right? Uh, oh no, can. you don't get jack shit. <laughs> yeah. You get five percent of the ten percent. Okay, don't worry. That's fine. That's fine. Hey, that's <laughs> still something better than the jack shit I was getting from this guy. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the popularity poll. It hasn't, didn't really change a whole lot. Um, Cred at 63, it was like 62 last time. Faults up to 14, Ethereal at 13, Overprime 11. I imagine after all the news coming out of Ethereal and Overprime, those are probably going to shift. Uh, Fault mm -hmm. may shift after version 14, but um, yeah, Cred hanging strong. I did change it up this time. I, I put, looking forward, what are you looking forward to? I put Fault version 14. Mm -hmm. So... That, Which, I think that I think upped their votes a little bit. I think yeah. it's only right that they ended on 14% for version 14 expectations. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that the perfect synergy. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Pred, though. Pred's still leading the charge. And I think rightfully so. I've, I've been a predecessor fan since the very beginning. I think they've been mm -hmm. doing things at exactly... Not, a, not always exactly right, but they've been doing things really well. Um, you know, Fault's great, and it's playable, and it's fun, but... Uh, when I've played Pred, I have preferred it over Fault for gameplay wise. Yeah, I uh, I I wish you would have been you could have continued doing the For the Minions for that time being because I would have loved to see how much that stress test did affect them though. Because mm -hmm. I think the numbers would have reflected if we were, mm -hmm. if we were still doing that pie chart for that time and then that stress test. See how those numbers would have changed that. I'm not because they, they're obviously you see they're still leading, right? They're, so I'm not saying it would have made them not leading, obviously, but where they would have went from because they would have been high at that time and then they had to have taken some kind of hit from it. Yeah, I imagine so. I imagine it would look a lot like when Core missed their original alpha date or whatever that was going to be. And the, the numbers kind of dropped pretty hard afterwards for a, a yeah. bit of time. And then they just disappear off the face of the earth, which yeah. is another thing. But um, but after they missed that, it kind of like you saw a decline in their numbers almost instantly that everyone was suddenly jumping ship to something else in terms of what they were excited for. Yeah, people jumped on the predecessor mm -hmm. right before that. Yep. And then when the alpha just, you know, the gameplay just wasn't there. They dropped yeah. it right back off again. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
And and you know, predecessor did their jobs. You know, they 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 went, you know, went back in their cave and and just got to work and, and came back out with that next alpha. You know, how was it a year later or whatever? Yeah, I, I, you know, yeah. And then came out and it was a lot better, a lot better. That was the smooth gameplay. That was the first time I played. I didn't get to play the first one. Um, you know, which it wasn't. It didn't look that fun to play, anyways. Um, but uh, I was watching some streamers play it and stuff like that. But like, it's they did their job, come back and and really polish that game right up um you brought up core the uh their last announcement i remember was that they're going away from the paragon remake yeah but right. they were still trying to make a game right was are they still doing a third person moba or we have no clue they just said they're going to their own way it's still supposed to be a third person moba just with their own ip their own heroes their own map all that their own okay. assets all that so, so really, since that announcement, we haven't seen anything out of them. No. So who's who's to say really where they're at so or anything? <laughs> eventually, 2023, we could see core added to that uh, that pie chart again. <laughs> possibly, possibly. I mean, their their Discord is still active and everything. Um, right. They're doing something over there. We just don't know mm -hmm. what it is yet. And without any real confirmation, I got burned right. by core a couple times. So I'm real leery of reporting on anything for them until I see some concrete evidence. Mm -hmm. nope, I understand that. But uh, yeah, that kind of dovetails nicely into the topic for discussion with uh, Predecessor being the first to ever have their alpha. The pros and cons of being the first because they were the first to get out there but their product wasn't really up to snuff and it kind of hurt them in the short term. However, yep. they were able to take all the data and, and improve from there, kind of go go down dark and come back out even stronger. So that really sums up a lot of the pros and cons of being first with something. Um, what do you guys got this? Who, who wants to go first? Jelly bearded. Who wants to go first? I'll say I'll let bearded go first. I guess. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> all right. The, it, like you said, pros of being first is you get the information right away. You know, like you get out there, you're able to, one, you're getting data for your own game you know, how, however it is, but you're also getting information from the community and the community is there because the community is excited. Um, it, once this flame of excitement for these games, you know, go, it starts to wear down a little bit, then that last team is not going to have much of a flame to go off of because everybody's like, okay, yeah, we've seen this before. This is nothing new or nothing that exciting. We've already been doing this for two or three other times. Um, so, First is a benefit there, but then you also have, you're the one, you're the front runner. Like anything that has that's negative happens, it, it's magnified. You know, you you got to take you know, take the hits and, and try to move forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think Fault really showed us that as well as the first game to a more open release, more open, consistent release. Right? They showed us that if your first impression is not top notch then people will write you off a year on at least a minimum, right? People yep. are still saying that from, because fault was the way it was on release that they still won't play it. Even yep. though the game has come leagues and bounds since then, yeah. it shows that like being just because you're first does not mean you're the best does not mean, mean you're it, going to survive, succeed, whatever that may be. And those people with that mindset are obviously wrong because it brought mangoes back. <laughs> so and if it could bring mangoes back, I mean, it, um, I think the big thing, and all I know all of these companies are having these conversations, right? And and I can say Ethereal especially, even though it's not one of the Paragon remakes, the conversation comes up in the 3D, just as a 3D MOVA space in general, right? Having Fault, Overprime, Predecessor, and Ethereal all relatively in similar development states, mm -hmm. right? You're releasing four three-dimensional MOBAs into the market at relatively the same time. Yep. There's competition out the wazoo, Oh, yeah. More so for the Paragon remakes because they're competing with each other even more directly. Mm -hmm. um, but the, they, these companies are also having the, the same conversation of what are the pros and cons of releasing now versus waiting for Pred to drop their next stress test versus Faults drop their next patch. What, what, what it's measuring those differences to yep. try and find when the most optimal time is to do something, whether it be a release, an announcement, anything. Oh, no, 100%. And they, uh, 
the another negative about being first is everybody those other four comp other three competitors out of the four they get to see what you did wrong as well and mm -hmm. then they get to learn from that you know so you're not the you're putting it out there and they're going to see the backlash of everything that happened however it is you know or even if it was acceptably great greatly like okay that's what they did right we need to do that and multiply it mm -hmm. how how do we do that you know so you kind of have to you know play with your cards close to your chest and, and and try to move forward strategically you know which <clears throat> this is the part that i'm okay with fault and what they're doing it and taking their while on these big patches is because if they just released them out in these smaller patches you know or, or quicker patches then there's gonna be more issues and then it's just gonna be more negative you know comments or whatever if they so they just take you know 13 came out all right two the problem is problem is 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 in my opinion, everybody hyping it up, you know, mainly like the mods and, and discord are hyping this up. Like it's the best thing ever when it's all like 13 was all backend information. So to a casual gamer, they're not going to see what that is, you know, you know, and, or the only way you're going to see it is if you played it in the beginning, like Mangoose did, and then be like, yep, I'm not liking this. And then you come back after 13 is like, Oh, this feels better. You know, you could feel it maybe, but you're not going to see it, that difference or whatever, right. you know? So, you hype it up too much and then that's the issue and but if you hold it to your chest and you don't hype it up and then you release it and when people see that huge like oh my gosh this is this was great they were holding like oh my gosh and then you don't even you don't even have to say how long it took you you're just like all right yeah we, we've had this whatever you know here it is you know the people like oh my gosh they hold that i what, what else they have you know mm -hmm. and then they're gonna keep wanting more but and i think faults a big con that some of these companies have to fight as well with the exception being fault is that when these things predecessor stress test their most recent stress test as an example they yep. were dark for months right they didn't really say anything didn't really do anything right come out with a stress test and it fails the way it did you also have this massive con of then what have you been doing with your time Right. Uh, and it's mm. it's the community perspective of like you you went dark for eight months and we saw no changes. You added yeah. a hero and the game didn't even work. What have you been doing? Right. So you can take your time and not be first. But that also has its own caveats and back and yeah. downsides as well. Yep. And not that that's a right mentality to have necessarily either. No, but it's it's the one that the community is going to have or a portion of the community is going to have. Oh no, definitely. I think yeah, yeah. Because go ahead. Well, so, some of the some of the pros too, like with Fault being the first to come into early access. Whenever something like that does happen with predecessor, like people get the itch to play Paragon, mm -hmm. they try to do that stress test. They can't play. Maybe they go play Fault instead because they can, or they see yep. like all this development going on for Overprime. They want to play Overprime, but they can't. So they go play Fault because yeah. Fault is playable. They they're first ones to come into early access. I think another big pro for Fault being in early access for so long is they've already worked through and dealt with so many bugs to that game. Like Beard was saying, I hated the game at first, and then by patch thirteen, it was good. If you think these other games are going to come out and not have a bunch of bugs and a bunch of stuff that needs fixed, and that they're going to have to go through that whole process that Fault's already been going through. So Fault, that, that kind of puts them a step ahead of the others. Maybe not Overprime as much, because Overprime was out and playable for a vast majority of this time. Just not not as many people were playing it. But um, yeah, Predecessor's going to have to deal with that. I have full faith in their team. Their team, like, they obviously can make a oh, very definitely. smooth, well-running game. But they're still, they're going to have, whenever they get that many people in playing at once like open those floodgates for early access. They're going to have to deal with the same stuff that fault has already dealt with. So we'll get to see. Hopefully we'll get to kind of contrast and compare. DDoSed again. What's that? Hopefully Amazon doesn't get DDoSed again. Yeah, no, that was very unfortunate for, for <laughs> right? strange matter. Right. The thing is though, like, and, you know, that's like, a, like, so as being known as the strange matter, white knight, you know, and not that I, it is what it is, but like people don't understand that people don't, that they look at that and like, Oh no, SMS fucked up. And it's like, that's not on them. Like, it, it, it just was, like you said, it was unfortunate. It just, are you, if they would have waited another day, everything would have been great. You know, it would have went smooth. 
or not, we, we, it would have been still some issues, obviously, but it wouldn't have been as bad as it looked, you mm -hmm. know? So, yeah, it was unfortunate, but um, with Predecessor and what they got going on, you like you said, they they went quiet and they came out, they had a hero, but, like, the game, besides the time to kill and a new hero, it really wasn't much more to it, mm -hmm. you know? It felt good, but it, it felt good before. Like, it, you know, like... I okay, you know thanks, it, but yeah, like it's just there. I think there was there's more that could have been done there, um, and another thing that I didn't you know was is, is communication. These communities with they they they're the communication. Like I, I was sitting there queuing up, waiting, not knowing what was going on during the stress test. All right, waiting. All right, well, hey, was, there's obviously some issue, which is fine. We knew it was a stress test. That's the whole point of this, right? But we were still waiting for communication, like. What's going on? You know, like, and that to and me was... is was the biggest thing that I was noticing throughout that entire stress test. Was yeah, the, the thing didn't work. That's fine. It's it either is or it's not. There's nothing I can do to change that. Right. Right. And there's nothing that really they can do short notice they're, that they're not already doing. Yeah. Their communication, their lack of information to people, their lack of telling anybody what was going on for essentially 24 hours was pretty shocking like it was just kind yeah. of like yep it's not working we're working on it and that was it for yep. a full day of people just trying to queue and trying to queue and trying to queue and trying to queue and then even when they did decide to kill the servers and just call the stress test off their announcement was like yes this was the problem but by the way shiny new characters we're gonna have in the next one like it was it, it was more quite of a, a diversion yep deflection, yeah, it was a yep. diversion perfect that, of like there was an issue, but let's divert our attention over here to shiny new characters. Like it, that concerned me greatly. I was like, no, no, no. I want to know more about that. Yeah. Give, give information, give something that gives your community ease about the problem that was going on rather than just divert them to something else. I'm, I'm worried because with that situation, what happened, I'm thinking, okay, they told the community, Hey, you're going to be able to stress test this. We're hoping for, we're for 24, uh, for 48 hours, right? That weekend. Mm -hmm. Right. They gave an end date. They gave an, like a time. Like, hey, this is what we're doing, right? And if we crash before, then great. We found what we saw. We wanted to find, but like, they, they, they obviously weren't planning to crash that early, like that soon. Like, there's people who crash instantly. Like that. It was I know thirty minutes in. Yeah, I know people who were like sitting there in stream, like queuing up for nine hours, and nothing was happening. For, like, mm -hmm. they didn't get a game it right. So and and they were in there right away, and they were pretty much in the beginning. So it it wasn't it wasn't what they were expecting. There, and so to me, that says there was something bigger happened, right? So I'm thinking, okay, we're going to come back a month later and we're going to do another stress test because they need to figure that that was a issue, but you didn't even get to test the, the, the servers. We have yet to test these servers because that wasn't, there was no way you had that many people in there that the server's like, all right, that's what happened because they even said they were bringing them in, you know, slowly, but it was 30 minutes in, it was crashed. Like, so that wasn't enough. There was no way it was that. There was something else going on there bring in you know so now we need a stress all right well a month later we'll do another stress test and we're still how long is that how long was that that was two three months ago at this point and and still no nothing was nothing's being said the hey we're you know all they the said was in, got more in their announcement hey, we're gonna need your help you know that's yeah the update is we're, we need more testers but that's not that's not the stress test that's not the community stress test that's testers going in there to test the game and maybe find bugs or whatever you know and do whatever or they're testing well that's what you guys talked about last episode wasn't it is the the difference with the, the computers like it wasn't a, a wide range of of pc qualifications right it, but it was it wasn't ridiculous like i made it sound like it was ridiculous and i and i didn't really mean to it's not they're not asking for ridiculously high specs but yeah the the rate the like they did not include the thing that got got me was they didn't include stuff that could you could have played Paragon on. I would expect mm -hmm. that if you could play Paragon on that computer, you should be able <clears throat> to play right at yep. least low settings, right? Like if you yeah. it, lower everything down to minimum, and then you should still have a playable game because you're right, it's the same assets, this very similar map to Monolith. Um, a lot of these similarities and things, yet the, the specifications are higher than what they were for Paragon's recommended settings, no less. Right? So and they've done a lot of good stuff for optimization, too. Like, um, mm -hmm. God, I forget his name, their map guy. Fringe? Yeah, Fringe. He's so fucking funny. 
<laughs> but yeah, he's done so many optimization things. Like instead of like uh, outcropping a rock, instead of that being eight different assets smushed together, he made it one asset so that there's less polygons actually trying to render one screen. So they've done a lot of great optimization things. I would think that you you would need like a less powerful computer than was needed for Paragon to play predecessor. So I don't know. And I think that's, you brought up an interesting point bearded is after that stress test, I know a bunch of us had the conversations about it. The community was talking about it. Everybody was like, okay, their back end failed. That's one thing. Fix the back end. Then they, they announce another stress test. They do something a month later, a month and a half later. Because it was basically guaranteed that they, if they wanted to do a stress test once, they didn't get their information, they need to do another one. Yep. And we just heard nothing. Yeah. And that, that to me as well, signals something bigger than what they told us happened. I think, I think Grux broke it. He slammed his, his, his you know, things down. <laughs> and that's why they announced him. Like, well, guys, we were trying to keep it a secret, but he broke the server. So here you guys go. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, uh, something uh, Omeda did first that I think was a definite pro for them is they reached out and started trying to find investors, which mm -hmm. no, how, no matter how you feel about that, they, they were able to get a lot of money from people that may have invested in something else. So they've got a yeah. pretty good chunk of change I mean, to, to, to work with. I, I, all right. So you're right. That is good and that if that's the route the route you want to go then yeah like you awesome you'll be able to get people to invest in your you, you obviously were able to sell them something so that says the game is is good in some way right um but i just don't like especially being an indie dev company right now and you're already taking a game that was already tried by a triple a company and it failed because they weren't able to capitalize on whatever they need to capitalize on so now you have to take that and try to fix their mistakes and, and get better with it. Not only are you doing that, now you have to pay the people that are looking over your shoulder because they want their money back because that's going to happen. They're not just mm -hmm. giving you, hey, here you guys yeah. go. We like this game. <laughs> it's all yours. You know, they're yeah. going to want something back. And that's kind of the problem that Epic had. You know, Epic has your big wigs like, hey, I'm sorry, but Paragon's not making money and we want money. Give us money. So let's do something about this. And that's why mm -hmm. Paragon pretty much failed. So you got to start doing something to kind of generate income. And if you're not doing anything to generate income, those investors are only going to wait so long. You know, that's where I think faults in the better spot because it's community driven and, and, you know, taking that situation and they're not, there's, there's nobody looking over their shoulders for that situation. It's just a community. I mean, a community can be pitchforks all they want, I guess, but they're still going to want to play the game. So. And you actually brought us something that I haven't thought about is, We've really only seen, what, one new skin out of Predecessor? Two, if you count the Severog skin? And how, are, if they're going to be a free-to-play game, which they have not charged the community any money, right? They don't have skins that we've seen to then generate that revenue to then pay their investors back in any way, yep. shape, or form. So and what is their monetization scheme? Is, is basically what I'm thinking now is... is We haven't seen that, mo that monetization aspect like via, via skins, which is what you see for most MOBAs. Where do you go from there? And and bringing that up, where was the Murdoch skin for stress, for stress test? That was one of their skin. Why are you not promoting your skins? You know, yes, it's a stress test. I get it. It's not actually, it's not alpha play or whatever, but that's still a promotion. You're allowing people to stream this while the, you know, literally you're just going to get, hey, that's something we made. Why wasn't it out? Why wasn't it able to be picked? I think, I think they have that skin. And I think they have many more. I, I think they do. Just, oh, I do. I do too. Yeah. But like you already had the game in, you had it the last alpha. It's not yeah. like you like you did something to take it out of the game. The Jailer Murdoch like, skin. Yeah, yeah, the Jailer Murdoch skin. And it's badass looking and it's reactive. Like, why not allow people to play with it? Even if you're not gonna allow skin selection, make that the base skin for Murdoch. We all know what yeah. Murdoch looks like. Make the yep. jailer skin the one that everybody sees. So when the game comes out, then they go, Oh, that's the skin I really want and purchase yeah. it. Yeah, because yeah, right, you there's... get to play with a reactive skin and you're like, oh, look how it's reacting. So then mm -hmm. when the game comes out, you're like, I got to have it. I, I, I remember playing that one on the stress test. I got to have it. The first taste is free, right? Yeah. It's, it, that's the exact yeah. concept. Is the, the first taste is free. They get let you feel the skin out and then be like, yep. okay, yeah, I do really want that and buy it. Yep. Maybe they're finally, finally going to listen to me and implement in-game advertising for, God. <laughs> for their monetization. No, 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 no. This or Prime Ball sponsored by Monster Energy Drinks. There's like Monster <laughs> Energy Drink stuff all behind or Prime. 
Oh, it'd be amazing. Uh, he has I mean, a big like said, muscle agree, scratch on his forehead. But if you end up listening to it, 10% of <laughs> the time, I, I definitely get my cut. <laughs> you guys you guys realize the only reason Jelly disagrees is because that's what Ethereal's going to do. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I gotta, I gotta go. Uh, <laughs> I got oh. Owen breathing down my neck now. Can we get a Victoria <laughs> Secret skin for uh, Malaya? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me get right on that for you. Sponsored by. Oh wait, that's just our old skin. <laughs> before, before they added to it. Oh shit. Um. So back to the being first and stuff of that. Like, I think the. Uh, a way to explain it is if when you're in first, like I feel like you have the in a gaming perspective, like you have uh, the the catch up mechanic is applied. You know, uh, if you I, if you ever played racing games, you know, you get so far in the lead, and also the next time people start catching you, it's like there's no no getting you know the you know that's what happens when this situation being in first. You have it gives everybody the ability to catch up to you if they take advantage of what they see and how they're doing their game. So right now, fault has a bounty. And the other ones yeah. can come and take that That's, bounty. Yep. 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 It's one oh. big game of leapfrog. All right. So, so fault. You need to get in a helicopter and go sit on stadium so nobody can get to you. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I mean, there. I mean, there's like like we've been saying. There's pros and cons to being first, and pros and cons to being last. But we're I, I, another thing. I just want to make clear is like none of it really matters right now like none of the polls matter or anything what matters is when they're all full make release make sure you vote on mangoose's poll though on what game you want yeah <laughs> make sure you vote on that but, <laughs> <laughs> but none of it matters like for real like like i've said it yeah. like jelly has alluded to it a couple times like it's been a roller coaster of popularity for these games you yep. never know it like three four six months from now which one's going to be on top which one's mm-hmm. going to be everybody's going to, going to be loving and you we certainly don't know two years from now once they're all full released and on console and all that shit which one's going yeah. to be ahead we you just don't know and even no the, the scary thing with these indie companies right and that's where i think Overprime and pred have a slight advantage is even if fault and ethereal take off and are the number one spot of these four games them being indie developers if they don't get funding they could just eventually keel over despite yeah. being the best game yeah they could just be out of money and say, like, sorry, we're just, we can't. And that's just it. So I think that's that's the reason why Fault needs to get out there and be first. Um, because if they're going to you know, continue going with this community-driven approach, then, or community-funded, we'll say, approach, then you need to get out there to where you can market it to the new you know, community because like, there's only so much money that these 150 people are going to be able to put into this game. <laughs> You're going to need more than that, you know, to put money into this game, right? It doesn't mm-hmm. matter how you could put three, 30,000 skins in there. We can only afford so much, at, you know, with the money we got. We can't, we won't be able to get all 30,000 skins. It doesn't matter what you put into this game. We're going to need more people to play this game. So mm-hmm. the faster they get out there, the faster they get their name out there to the rest of the community, you know, this community they're trying to grow from, whoever, you know, Paragon community, you know, I don't care, Overwatch community, pull from everybody, you know, start pulling from everywhere. Cast that net out and bring people in. The faster they get to that, the better for them if they want to continue this community-funded uh, situation. And that that's, yeah. a, that's a topic in and of itself, the pros and cons of community-funded versus investor, investment investor back, yep. backed. Yeah. Because, I mean, we've already seen with Overprime some of the cons because they had to change the names that was that was Netmarble wanted them to change all the names, so now we have Daryl instead of Gideon. Was that? But was that? I wasn't there because I mean I think all three of them went through an issue because there was an a there was a misunderstanding of what was allowed with the mm-hmm. epic assets, mm-hmm. right? So all three of them, but something came up that they 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 eventually all got approved because even. Even then, I got. I was told not too long. It was after thirteen. I was told, "Hey, you can tell your community that we're going to release all Paragon uh, uh, heroes." And it's like in my head, I'm like, well, "Weren't we already going to do that?" Yeah. <laughs> like, but now it's official. And come to find out, I don't know. I don't like. It's all hearsay. I didn't like. There was no dev that came and told me this, or, or anybody in that situation. But there was something going on that with the epic release assets, like what was allowed to release and what wasn't allowed to release. 
and something to do with the heroes. And then finally, the, the epic finally just said, yeah, it is what it is. Go ahead and do what you got to do. So the way I understood that is Overprime changed their names so they would avoid the legal uh, backlash that was going to happen if Epic would have kept pushing. But now that Epic's not pushing anymore, you would essentially, in my opinion, change those names back. But you've already changed them. To revert them back would just kind of make you think that you made a mistake and it would look bad on you, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, what I've been told officially from Overprime is that that was Netmarl's decision to change those names. It could be for the reasons you put out. Right. You just said, but it was net marbles thing. And that like, again, I don't want to get into that. Cause that's a topic for a whole nother day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's start wrapping that, it up. Uh, jelly final thoughts, yeah, pros and cons. The biggest thing for the pros and cons of being first is it's a double edged sword. Yo. Being first can bite you just as easily as being last can bite you. Right? Like it doesn't matter. It's about execution and reception. Those, those are the only two things that matter, right? Yep. First, last, otherwise. Execution and reception are the two things that are going to make or break the games. I agree. I agree. The what you need to do is uh, out of all these uh, all these games that are making, you know, all four of them, you need to listen to the community because mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter if you have investors or not, the community is what's going to make the game, you know, survive. Right? You got to you have a community to play the game. You're going to be able to continue doing more. You know, the, you obviously have to grow that community more to get more funding, and, and however that's going to work out, but listen to the community if you don't listen to the community you're gonna have you know issues huge so mm -hmm. community is the one to talk to i'll just say that if you're going to be first make damn sure that it's a good first and if you're going to be last make damn sure that you're coming in last with something great because mm -hmm. uh yeah they're all going to be competing at some point in time i wish it wasn't that way i really wish that they would have all gotten together to produce one game from the very beginning but that shit ain't gonna happen. That is, no. They are never gonna merge, so don't even ask. Right now, we got the three. It's up to us to pick which ones we want. We'll, we'll see which ones succeed and which ones fail. Maybe they'll all succeed. Very highly doubt it. Maybe <laughs> one will succeed and the others fail. We'll see. I don't know. I, what I think is Ethereal is gonna succeed on its own, and one of these pair of zombies, they're gonna go off on their own. That's my personal prediction, but... I don't know. Let's go about wrap it up. Let's talk about some plugs here. Bearded, what do you want to plug, brother? Uh, just my Twitch. You know, the Bearded Wolverine. Twitch.tv. Twitch.tv slash the Bearded Wolverine. <laughs> I was like going to say a whole like bearded tag that I don't actually have. I don't know why I even said that. But yeah. <laughs> Jelly. What was that motto one more time that you always say? <laughs> that I always say? Uh, don't get your hopes up, but never give up hope. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mangoose? Anything to plug for yourself? Uh, uh, on Bearded's channel, we do the Fault Partner panel where we talk about Fault every Friday. And then it comes out on Windows channel as a video. So if you want to yeah. see more Bearded and I, we both get pretty pretty toasty for that one. <laughs> so we get a little wild. <laughs> we, but, uh, we have a fun time on that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little sure. less professional. <laughs> yeah. Jelly, anything to plug? Uh, I'm actually going to start at streaming again pretty quick here. So let's go. Yay! We're going to have jelly streams back again. So it should be exciting. I right. missed the jelly streams. So Marvelous Monday is coming back then? Yeah, man. <laughs> All right. Let's go. All right, and that is going about that is going to wrap it up for this week. Thank you all for joining us. Um really appreciate you coming out and we will see you next time. Mangoos. Shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, and Stun. 